my name is Kevin Rice. I'm the field crop entomologist at the university. And my specialty is invasive insects and field crops. And today I'm just going to give a brief summary about degree days and how they can be used in IPM for insect doubting and management. You're all involved in agriculture and it's pretty obvious that a plants require temperature and one of the primary factors that affect plant growth and germination of flowering. Of course, there's other factors such as fertilization and rain, but temperature is a really, really important factor for predicting plant growth. It's even more important for insects. So basically, temperature really drives everything in the insect world. It affects their growth and how efficient they are at uh, digesting food, and it even affects uh, our biological control agents and how effective they are at knocking down pests. Temperature is uh, actually very important even in insect mating. So this is a snowy tree cricket. Just as a little side note, the number of chirps that that cricket makes per minute, you can actually determine the temperature outside. It's kind of a cool party trick if you're out camping. So insects correlated development and emergence with temperature. And humans have actually realized this for centuries. So phenology and realizing patterns that occur in nature is one of the oldest science in human culture. Humans very early on noticed that there's patterns of blooming and bird migration and insect activity. And there's been higher books written on this. So there's a book by Donald Orton that actually shows uh, these patterns that happen uh, on a regular basis. And naturalists started figuring out that there was these correlations between some of the plant phenology and insect activity. And we can use plants to basically predict when insects might be emergent. So that's kind of cool. Some of these examples are when the star magnolia tree blooms, that's when eastern tent caterpillars eggs hatch, and that's when they become active in orchards too. Another example is when red bud blooms, that's when gypsy moth eggs hatch and they're active in the forest. Bridal wreath, after the blossoms start to turn brown and fall, that's when you have flathead apple tree borers hatch. That's a phenological event that coincides with plant phenology. One of the, the newer ones that we found is uh, that invasive emerald ash borer, the adult's flight is highly correlated when black locusts bloom. And some forestry people actually can use this for managing when they're applying BT control insects. However, plant phenology isn't the best way, right? Uh, there's a lot more insects than there are plants. And if you don't have that specific plant on your property, obviously that's not going to help you predict insects. So Entomologists came up with a better, sort of more accurate way of predicting insect emergence based on temperature, and we call these degree days. Basically, it's a pest activity calendar, and it's based on heat units or temperature. And, and this is really good because you can actually track these developments with numerous insects pests and specific life stages for those insects. And we can use local weather data to predict when insects might be emerging then using these heat units and that can help us target scouting and help us make management decisions. And that should help reduce labor costs for scouting and save money. For insects, you know, insects overwinter and are inactive in a different uh, life stage depend on the species. So on the left here, that's your spotted lanternfly egg case. That's how it overwinters. That's a new invasive species. Japanese beetles, they overwinter underground as larvae. And then you have things like stink bugs that overwinter as adults. And we kind of found that there's a general estimate that most insects will not have any development or any activity until the temperature rises above 50 degrees. So that's sort of what we use as our base temperature for insect activity. And for these degree days, we have to have a starting date when we start tracking heat units. We can do that. We just pick January 1st across the board because we know in January it's typically not above 50 degrees. So that's when we're going to start tracking our heat units for insects. And degree days is a pretty simple calculation. There are more complicated models, but for this we're just doing average degree days. It's based on average temperature and then we're going to subtract the base threshold, the 50 degrees. So if we just look at Columbia, Missouri on Sunday, this past Sunday, the high was 68 and the low was 40. So if we take the average of that, uh, you get 55. And I said the base for insect development is 50. So we take the average daily temperature, the average temperature was 55. We minus from the base development of insects and you get five degree days for Sunday. And so we keep each degree day for each day that we calculate and we add those together on a continuous basis from the start point of January 1st. 
Another example is Tuesday. So yesterday it was a bit warmer. We had a high of 81. Our low was above threshold completely. So when you do the simple calculation, we get 16 degree days. So if you add the two days together, you have 21. And again, we would do this from January 1st and we would add the degree days that accumulate every single day through the calendar. Then we can take the scientific literature and we know when certain insects become active. So there's certain degree day threshold that certain degree days insects become active. For emerald ash borer, it's 500 degree days. That's when they fly. So when we calculate the degree days and we add them all together, that's when we know when we hit 500, that's when the adults emerge. We do this for orchard and horticultural crops a lot. And we do it with our moths species. Now a lot of these moths are, are migrating from other areas so we can't just rely on temperature. We basically a lot of the times we'll wait till we catch the moth in a pheromone trap and then we know the number of degree days it takes for those eggs to hatch and this is important because if you know the moth is in your orchard laying eggs, the eggs are not susceptible to most insecticides. So you have to wait till eggs hatch and we know the degree days for each species. So this is just showing you for coddling moth in apple and pear. After you catch a moth in a pheromone trap, after you hit that threshold, these are the degree days that are associated with insecticide timing and different insecticides work better on different life stages. So th that's how we can use these degree days. A couple of more examples of this, uh, spotted wing drosophila you may be familiar with if you're a small fruit grower. It's an invasive insect. It causes substantial damage in fruit. So on the bottom picture, that's sort of the goal of a raspberry grower on the left. If you have spotted wing drosophila and you do not manage them, the picture in the middle is sort of uh, what you end up with. Yeah, it's an extremely devastating pest. And we've worked out some of the degree days associated with that. And we see that the first egg laying event is with 261 degree days. So that's if you're tracking the degree days throughout the year, that's when the overwintering adults start to become active. And we see that around 500 degree days is when you get the peak laying activity. Again, that's using a base 50. And after that, for spotted wing drosophila, you don't need to monitor the activity of degree days anymore because they're reproducing generation every 14 days, basically. But you do want to know when the, when the peak population is. You don't need to be really scouting or spraying for spotted wing drosophila until you get that peak or before that peak egg laying activity. There are many resources online for you to get degree days so you don't have to calculate them yourself. We have one at Missouri here. This is giving you uh, the, the rundown on the far right. You can see accumulated degree days since April 1st right here and that tracks that for us. Then lastly, I just want to say that degree days are very helpful at helping us predict insect movement and activity, but they aren't perfect. So insects exist in micro climates, right? So that can be very different from what the temperature data, the temperature station is. If it's in a raspberry plant, if it's shaded, insect is underneath leaves, that temperature is a little different than what the weather station is recording, right? And again, there's a couple other factors that affect insect development that aren't included in degree days. And then uh, one of the other issues is that base 50 is a calculation and it's not perfect for all insects. Lastly, I just want to highlight that the University of Missouri has a pest monitoring network and that is for these migratory species. So some of the fall army worms and the black cutworms, they are migrating into our state from southern states. So their development isn't, the, the moth's development is not associated with degree days. So we have that information up there for you on that website. And again, uh, so the benefits are tracking degree days. They're accurate from year to year. They reduce scouting effort and help with decision management.